I want you to think about Joshua's men. They travel from Jericho up to Gibeon, which is about another 10 miles across here. All night they march. You guys ever pull an all-nighter marching 30, 40 miles uphill, about 3,300 foot difference over 20 miles, and you're marching all night? Question, are you ready to fight the next day? We're talking hand-to-hand -hand combat and hand-to-hand -hand combat the next day. And I take away, you haven't got any Red Bull or Monster. Okay? Question, are you going to be ready to fight? Joshua then prays for what? Joshua then prays as they're fighting here. Joshua says, Lord, we're going to beat these guys. Give us another 24-hour day period. Have any of you tried pulling two 24 hours like that? <coughs> okay, now I want to ask you about the sun standing still. That's where we're going. They march all night, and then Joshua asks for another 24 hours. Does that seem like it makes sense? Or does that raise big questions to me? Are there other ways to look at that 24-hour day lengthening thing? And I'm saying it. I'm not sure that it fits the context. If I were Joshua, I'd be asking for a shorter day because we just marched 30 miles. By the way, you march at night in the desert, what's the problem? Do you go out in the desert at night like that? And the answer is no. They tell you, by the way, you learn pretty soon. Do you listen to the traditions? When they tell you you don't walk in the valley, do you walk in the valley? Well, we ignored that and we just fuck got our heads knocked off. They told us you don't go out there at night because what happens at night, you can't judge things well and people have walked off cliffs and next day they find them dead in these canyons, okay? You don't walk at night. Uh, by the way, do our troops fight at night purposely? Our troops fight at night because we have the advantage at night because of these night goggles and stuff. So our troops, I know when my son was in Afghanistan, both in Afghanistan and in Iraq, they would go out on night patrol because we have the advantage at night because of night goggles. But if you don't have those night goggles, are you in trouble? And so that's what they're saying. So anyways, let's work with Joshua in this, uh, the southern campaign then. The Gibeonites, uh, their slickness, uh, very slick. They, they dress up in these old clothes and they wear old food with its moldy food and their wineskins are all cracked and they say, oh, you know, we took this bread, we took this bread fresh from the oven and now look, it's all moldy. We're from so far away. Make a treaty with us. Joshua, make a treaty with us and things. And they make a treaty with them. Then they call out and say, we need some help now. The Southern League, Jerusalem, Hebron, Lachish, these other cities are attacking us. So Joshua marks his, his troops all night. And in chapter 10, verse 11, he describes then the sun standing still. Sin. As they fled before Israel, Israel marches all night, gets up there and attacks to help protect Gibeon. As they fled before Israel, rode down to from Beit Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky. And more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Does that make sense? More of them were killed by the hailstones than by the Israelites' swords. One day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, and this is what he says, O son, stand still over Gibeon. So sun stands still over one horizon and moon over the valley of Ailan, which is the other horizon. So sun stands still over there, moon stands still over there. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jasher. Have any of you guys read the book of Jasher? That's a sign for next week, okay? Where is the book of Jasher? Is it part of the Bible? By the way, does Joshua cite the book of Jasher? He says, hey, all this story, if you want an elaboration on the story, see the book of Jasher. Where's the book of Jasher? Nobody knows. Okay, the book of Jasher has been lost. By the way, does the Bible mention many books that have been lost that from the past? Was the Bible the only books running around the ancient world? No. Here he mentions the book Jasher that's long gone. Nobody's seen it in 3,000 years. But Joshua apparently had recorded this story. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed from going down a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Very interesting statement there. So, sun standing still. What does this mean, the stun sun standing still? Some people say this is Joshua's missing day, 24-hour period. This is a 24-hour period when the sun stood still. Uh, by the way, I ask you, does the sun stand still or does the earth spin? Does the sun stand still or the earth spin? The sun goes up because of the spinning of the earth, right? 
So actually, now you've got to stop the Earth from spinning. Questions, does that cause big problems? Hmm. All of a sudden, the oceans go, whoosh, you know. Okay, so you know, the Earth's spinning. Uh, could, you, could you do light bending? Could he bend the light to make it look like the Earth was, you know, the sun standing still? So I don't know how God did it or whatever. But some people say that, hey, they've got, they broke this into a computer, and the computer has found that there's 24 missing hours when we punch this into the computer. My problem with computer, that they've actually found the computer when they do a computer analysis, that there's a day missing from the ancient world, and they attribute it to this to Joshua's missing day. My problem with computers is, do you know the GIGO principle, the GIGO principle for computers? Garbage in, garbage out. Do computers tell you out what you put in? And so all I'm saying is be careful about this. Computers prove the Bible thing, okay? Be careful again about computers prove the Bible thing. So the sun's standing still, cautious on the computer standing still. Here's, does Joshua want 24 more hours for his troops to fight? What I'm going to tell you is I think his troops were dead tired and he's asking for relief. And some people suggest that what he's asking, the word for stand still can also be translated silenced. And what he's asking is that the sun be silenced that the sun be silenced. That is, his troops are getting beat on by the sun. The sun is intense over there, and the sun is beating down. He says, Lord, silence the sun. By the way, does, do the clouds come in with the hailstones? Do the clouds silence the sun? And so some people think that what this is calling for is the silencing of the sun. The hailstones with the clouds come in, do silence the heat of the sun. The hailstones take these Canaanites out, and things cool down. That this is what Joshua asked for. Now, by the way, does the text really say here in the NIV the sun stands still on things? So this doesn't fit. And I want to give this about a 20% possibility or less uh, possibility, maybe about a 15% possibility. This one's probably more. Um, there's a guy named John Walton. He teaches at another school. I don't like to mention the name. It's, it's a place called, I think it's called, um, it's in Chicago, outside Chicago. It's, uh, I think it's a place called Wheaton. Anyways, and John uh, Walton teaches there. And Walton is a crazy man. That's why I kind of like him so much. Uh, and uh, he comes up with the most interesting, fascinating, well-researched ideas that are creative and not... I don't know. He's, he's an incredible scholar. And I like him because of his creativity and all sorts of other things. Um, but anyways, John Walton was examining Babylonian omen texts. This is no joke. Babylonian omen texts. Now, what are Babylonian omen texts? Omens are like you put a curse on somebody or something like that. And omens are, are bad omens. Do you guys ever hear of bad omens, good omens? Yeah. Actually, you guys are around Salem, so you probably know about this stuff. Bad omens and good omens. And what, he, what he's suggesting is that what's going on with Joshua is that Joshua says, God put the sun over here on one horizon, the moon on another, that the Canaanites would see that and realize this is a bad omen. This is a very bad day to fight. And the Canaanites would freak out because the sun and moon position, they would read that as that the gods have spoken against us and that we are fried man because the gods are saying there's a bad omen against us based on these omen texts. Now, by the way, so what Joshua is saying is put the sun here, the moon there, give them a bad omen so that they will run and our guys will get relief. In other words, our guys aren't going to have to go after fighting these guys and God takes them out with the hailstones. Now, by the way, does this make sense that this could possibly be an omen? He says, the sun over Gibeon, the moon over Ayalon, and that he sets this up as a bad omen. And I really like this suggestion. Uh, it's, it sounds half crazy, and it probably is, but so am I. And so I, I just, I want to give this, I want to give this a shot, okay? I'm not saying that's the way it is. I'm saying if I'm probably going to do it right, I'll probably go the sun stood still. But I, I like this because it explains so many things about his troops being tired and things and asking for relief for his troops rather than that, okay? So can we give this a 5 or 10%? Uh, anyway, so I, I think this is an interesting interpretation. And I think it, it's possible. It's based on these ancient omen texts, and I, I think he, he may be into something. Hannah? Okay, so the first one is 20% right? No, no, no. I'm saying the first one, this is a standard one that most people hold. This is like 80%. And I want to do this one about 15%. And I want to do this one at about 10%. Thank you. No, no, no. Don't say thank you. 
What did I just do? 80, 20, 15. It doesn't add, it adds up more than 100. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Anyways, but, it just, but what I'm trying to say is this one's probably the one that's standard, and this, this one's probably unlikely, but I, I just think it's fascinating. It, it explains stuff, to be honest with you, it explains stuff that I've never been able to explain before, and that's why I like his suggestion. Okay, so it's just, uh, you kind of got to walk on that. Okay, now, what is so special, now this is, what, this is what excites me. Check this out. Chapter 10, verse 14. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down a full day. There has never been a day like it. What is so unique about this day? There has never been a day like it before or since. What is so unique about this day? A day when the Lord listened to a man. Did Joshua pray and God had the heavens set up according to Joshua's prayer? This is incredible. And what I'm trying to say is, does this verse tell us, does prayer matter? Does prayer, does prayer change things? Does prayer make a difference? It says this day has been like no other day. God listened to the voice of a man and set the heavens according to Joshua's request. Question, we're coming up to the day of prayer. Does prayer matter? Yeah. You can address Almighty God. God listens. He listened to the voice of a man. That is incredible. Like I said, I've got four kids. My kids don't listen to me. God listens to me. That's incredible. 